I think the first movie kind of took everybody by surprise, but I, I think what people responded to was firstly the classic element, really felt like, like a throwback to those great 80s movies like Lethal Weapon and Die Hard. There was a lot of grittiness, a lot of great action. And those old, pure, 100% heroic characters who you know, were just badass, loyal, and funny. You know, those great one-liners. But I think uh, as well, it was just bold and audacious right from the start. That's when I read the script, I remember thinking, oh my God, we are just going for it here. Like, up the ante immediately. So, and I think people really responded to that. If your first movie is good enough and people want another one, then you make another one. And, and uh, we, we immediately got pressured it to, to uh, make a sequel. So, But I didn't know at the time, one, I was pretty beaten up for the first one. And uh, I didn't know that I really want to go and commit that to the second one because it did take, take a, a lot out of me. And then also I thought, where do you go? Like you've attacked the White House. You've taken the president hostage. You've started at the very top. Um, and I really wasn't sure where we could where we could take it. So that was the big challenge: was find, how do you raise the stakes up the ante and and make it even scarier, even more exciting, even funnier, even you know all of those things. Just just push it up. And I wasn't ever going to do it unless I knew that we could do that. We kind of thought this could be awesome: a road movie in London. Because after the initial attack, that's how it unfolds: is is me and the president. It's kind of like hunted animals with London cleared out. So it kind of has, it reminds you a bit of World War Z or 28 Days Later, or, you know, it's like you even have that kind of zombie movie feel. The city is cleared out and it's me and him and we don't know who we can trust, who's watching, where we can go. And that led to something really exciting. After the first movie, he's won his way back into the president's trust and we see what an amazing individual he is and he's a guy you want by your side, which he has now been with the president for a couple of years. Um, but he has a kid on the way and he has to reevaluate the situation. Is, does he really want to keep taking these, these risks? I think for him, he would gladly lay down his life for his country, but he's not thinking about him anymore. He has his wife, but especially a child on the way and it's literally going to be born in a couple of weeks. Um, and it was not a great start for him because he's, he's composing his resignation letter as, as the movie starts because it's time to move on. And then, of course, he's called into one last, <laughs> one last project, one last action. So basically, at the start of the movie, or, or early on in the movie, we find out that the UK Prime Minister has died in unusual circumstances. And there's going to be a state funeral. It's a huge event. There's going to be leaders from all over the world coming in. It's a security nightmare. And in the middle of that, the president has to go in. And of course, there's security nightmare on top of security nightmare, especially um, it, it, where we are today with, with the threat. So um, Mike, it never feels good to Mike, but basically it's something he's got to do. And it feels like a swan song. If he can just get this done and get back in time to see his baby being born, then we're good. They've planned it really rather br brilliantly on an epic scale and thought of every eventuality. And uh, in, in no time at all, the, the face of the world has changed. And the last man standing is the president. And I'm obviously tasked with saving him at any cost. But it's just the two of us now in London alone, surrounded by terrorists. And uh, just what a great setup for a movie. To have Morgan Freeman turning up and Melissa Leo, Robert Forrester, Aaron Eckhart, what a great cast to have coming to set every day. And that was, it was, um, it was exciting. At least the ones we didn't kill. You know, we killed a lot in the first movie, but, but anybody we didn't kill, we brought back. And Angela Bassett, how could I forget Angela? She's just awesome. We had a lot of fun together because we're, um, it was just, you know, the first movie, even though we were on set together a lot, we didn't really have many scenes together, just right at the start and right at the end, whereas this movie is the opposite. We, we don't start together, but for the rest of the movie, we are together until the end. And it was, you know, it was, it was a great experience. He's a good man. When Morgan comes on set, everything changes. You know, the crew get, it is incredible that the crew get so excited. And he just ups everyone's, everyone's game. And he's such a good man. Everybody fusses over him, but he doesn't need any fuss. He's like, hey, I'm here. I'm doing my job. I'm good. We're, we're all right. And he's just in your face, but in the nicest, freshest way. He's got a great sense of humor. And um, it, he is, it's, it's, just, it's just great to see him around. It's great to have him part of the movie. Well, it was just interesting to get a, 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 another artist's take on where the franchise could go. And, and Babak comes 
very much a man of his soul. Everything has to be kind of streamed through his consciousness and where has he had any previous experience of this? How can we make it meaningful and truthful to an audience? So I think he brought a lot of uh, sensitivity to the movie. And uh, he didn't have a massive amount of experience in action movies, um, but we brought all the team and he knew where to say, okay, you guys do this. And, and, and he brought his expertise and it was really a great kind of, kind of union. Well, we're constantly having a plan ahead. You go, okay, what is the protocol here? And there's not like there is a hell of a lot of protocol for the President of the United States and his um, Secret Service protector next to him in the middle of London, which has been cleared out, which is partly to our advantage. But the problem with that is now, whoever we see, we don't know. Are they going to kill us or are they going to help us? We don't know who to trust. That's one of the major obstacles is where do we go? So we plan, we got to get to the safe house, but trying to get to that safe house because things aren't making sense. It's like we're being watched, they know where we're going and they're all over the place, um, which is a bit, of a bit of a struggle. So even when we go into the underground, they're there. When we come out of the underground, they're there. You know, they, they're, they're tracking the chopper. They seem to know where everything is, is happening. Um, and even at the safe house where you would think we would be safe, are we really safe? It's, just never know which way it's gonna, it's gonna go. There's nothing better than sitting in a cinema being excited, being scared, be, you know, with your adrenaline going, think, I don't know what's gonna happen next, or being entertained. And, uh, and, and I think that's what this movie brings, is an, a, a fantastic roller coaster ride that has you on the edge of your seat. It's incredibly visceral. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, you know, what, on a Friday and Saturday night, there's, there's uh, nothing better than to go and see a movie like that. And also to buy into the, the notion of heroism, to be inspired, to, to see people who are willing to lay down their lives for their, their country, you know, the good, the good against evil. I, I love those kind of stories, and I think audiences do too, which is why these movies do so well. He's not a superhero. He's a regular human being, but he's brilliant at what he does. He's incredibly tough and he's brutal. And that's one of the things I love about Mike. He's kind of unforgettable because he's punishing. Perhaps, and he's kind of an anti-hero sometimes when you look at him like that. He's, he's definitely not the most perfect. He pushes too hard sometimes. And, uh, but he's the guy you want on his side. Kind of reminds me a little bit of your, like Leonidas in 300, where they're the heroes, but they do stuff that's pretty questionable. And I think that's what, that's what Mike does. But at the end of the day, you want him having your back. It's always about keep getting as fit as you can, getting as supple as you can. Um, so as much of it is, is physio and, and stretching. Um, and then I work, always work with stunt guys, a lot of whom were Navy SEALs or SAS, and that's who I was training with in London and Bulgaria. Um, and fighters, you know, martial artists and um, so right from the start, you start learning the choreography of routines. I've done a lot of fighting now, but each time you try to find what can you bring that's fresh. And, and that's what we did in this movie was like, okay, let's have a really cool car chase that you haven't seen for a while. And the fact that it's going through the streets of London is kind of awesome. Then you go, well, let's take it up into the air. Now we'll have chopper action amongst choppers. And then let's have action in the underground. And then we'll have seals that we thought were good guys, but are they? And let's have a fight in the safe house. And, and, you're, and, and you're bringing in guns, you're bringing in explosives, you're bringing in hand-to-hand -hand knives. So you kind of get it all in the movie and it's non-stop. I have a couple of guys here I love to work with, and, uh, and, but the Bulgarian guys are phenomenal. And they're super hardworking and very skillful. And then we brought a couple of guys over from London and they were working it for months with the director and with me as well, trying to get the best, the best line into this building and, and, and bringing in as many kind of exciting and cool and real um, parts to, to, the kind of, to the action as we could. I really enjoyed the stunt having to fly out the back of the car and, and shoot. That was one individual stunt that I enjoyed, but I think it was um, the stitching together of the six one-off action pieces because there was so much going on and everyone you had to remember how many bullets here, when to reload, when you jump this thing and how to get under this, duck this, say this, but, and you had to, it was so quick and it was a huge amount of pressure and it was a freezing cold night. Um, these are all the obstacles that I love.
I love under pressure. I, I love a kind of poor environment because it really brings it out of you. And, and, and funnily enough, it's probably my favorite part of the movie because when they all got put together, you're like, this is, it's insane. You're there. You are there in the middle of a firefight between our forces and terrorists as they try and hold a building and we try and get in. And it, and it, and it leads you right through to the end of the movie. I mean, it's just non-stop, but you're so in it with Banning just watching him go through everything and you really feel like, you know, it's, I, I love it. You're gonna see a lot of the kind of great stuff you saw in, in Olympus Has Fallen, but more. If uh, it, it's, whereas Olympus was the White House, this is kind of all of London and a lot of the world's leaders. Um, and it happens in such a mind blowing way. The action is nonstop. It's one of the most e exciting films in terms of just taking you on a ride and also very much entertaining, it's very funny. And, um, but it's again a throwback to those classic movies, but it's done in such a gritty, real way that it's very provocative. So you're watching this, and even though it's kind of insane, you're still like, hmm, what if, what if? And, and I like that, and that's something that we, we had in Olympus as well, which was much as it was sensationalizing the idea, but the idea itself, you play with and you go, hmm, that's actually very scary, but you get to watch it in a cinema and go home and be safe. But while you're in there, you're like, you're on that ride. Olympus centered around one building, which was great for a claustrophobic feel, but this centers around so much of London and you watch it unfold in a way that just blows your mind. But then you still get the claustrophobic feeling because it's two guys stuck together, great friends, but both from very different walks of life. How are they gonna deal with this? So you climb right into their psyche and how they get through this situation and you go on this crazy road movie. So I feel like it has a, a lot of what Olympus had and more.